Tick tock, time to rock. Merry Christmas to everyone. And Merry Christmas to you. Mike Jones, Inspiring Philosophy. Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me on again. Third week in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this might end up being a uh, trend here. Oh, hang on. Got Aiden Peterson here saying, hey, guys. He's a uh, young apologist up in New York. Started tagging along with us when we were rolling up on uh, groups like the, the Black Hebrew Israelites and stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Nice. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we are going to be talking about whether Christians should celebrate Christmas. We're going to be talking about whether Christmas is pagan. We hear a lot of things, and this is a good time of year. Turns out, turns out that there are lots of myths that get spread around. Uh, if you mm -hmm. think, if you think to yourself, "Hey, where did I, where did I get that from?" This claim of doesn't have to be on this topic. It's about all kinds of topics. But lots of times we we believe things and they get passed around. And then if we actually start looking into them, we find out the evidence doesn't always go where we think. Um, wait, Air, Air Church here is asking, will wood appear decorated too? So I think he's asking if I'm going to have a Christmas hat as well. Um, sadly, sadly, Air Church, I left my Santa Claus costume at Vocabs when we were recording a certain episode of Muhammad, Muhammad's Boom Boom Room that will air uh, on Christmas Eve. I won't give any more details about that. Um, all right. Well, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about Christmas, and it's actually it's actually an important topic to a lot of people. Um, if if you believe that this is like some you know just pagan thing, and that all of these uh, these things we do on Christmas are we actually got from the pagans, like Christians one day were looking at the pagans going, man, they, they, they got, they're worshiping this tree over there and they're bowing down to this tree. We could do that too. We could have a tree and then just, you know, bow down to it and be receiving presents from the tree. Like, you know, we receive presents from the mother goddess or whatever, whatever you guys think that was. Um, you know, you could see why, you know, what, seeing Christians celebrate uh, Christmas around the world might bother you. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look on that. Uh, IP, why don't you introduce yourself for anyone who's watching and didn't see one of the last couple of live streams? Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for everyone? Yeah, I'm Inspiring Philosophy. I'm a Christian apologist. I have a channel here on YouTube just like David does, and I do a lot of different videos. The only difference is you never see my face in the videos. It's all just graph-driven <clears throat> videos. Yeah. But So, yeah, I cover a lot of topics. One of the topics I cover is does Christmas have a pagan origins? Yeah. And uh, – yeah, I think I think there are lots of people who wish that I would make my videos without showing my face. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get a couple comments here up at the beginning. Uh, S.J. Thomason says, "Let the Christians celebrate Christmas." So there we have. Hey, by the way, why, why doesn't everyone everyone go ahead and uh, tell me real quick what your position on on this is? Uh, Christmas, you know, yay, a thumbs up or something like that. Or, oh, you could even use, uh, if you're in the Boom Squad, you can even use your special uh, uh, emojis and give us uh, Muhammad saying yes or Muhammad saying no. But uh, what's your position? Is it sort of a yes, no, or I don't know on the question of whether Christians should celebrate Christmas? Uh, we have we have Capturing Christianity here. That's our mm -hmm. friend Cameron. Uh, you might want to check his channel out. Um, he is... He's cool because uh, Cameron, uh, I, I think it. What what he has a background in like photography, right? He has he has some technical yeah. background where he's like a master of like videography and photography. So uh, his his uh, his recordings are like the highest the highest quality thing you'll ever see from coming from an apologist. Mm. Um, all oh. right. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, a lot of comments coming in, people saying it's pagan, some saying they like it, so that's good. But yeah, there's a common belief that Christmas descends from a pagan holiday, and I cannot find any evidence that it actually is. So people just sort of believe it without any evidence. Yeah, let's let's check out some of these comments, and when we get to one that you want to respond to, you just jump on there. Uh, so hello, people says, let's go ahead and get everyone's position here. Uh, Christmas is not bad. I think this is before I asked for responses, uh, but Nate2D2 uh, says... Uh, you got a debate about this coming up, right? Is he talking about? Oh, you already responded. Yeah, I have a debate on the uh, December twenty third on the Gospel Truth channel. 
I have done debates on this in the past. I did a debate on the channel called New Tutorial. He's like a crazy fundamentalist. And we debated it. That was one of my favorite debates I've ever done. What's... I also debated a pagan on capturing Christianity, I think, two years ago. He goes by the name Ocean. He's actually a really nice guy, but it was fun. What's the exact topic? It's Christmas Pagan. It's Both Christmas of the Pagan. Debates were okay. That, yeah. And that's on the 23rd? Yeah, that'll be on the Gospel Truth channel uh, December 23rd. Are you going to repost it on your channel? I'll share the link. Okay. All right, everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to actually see this. Uh, now, who'd you, who'd, you, who'd, you, who'd you say you were debating on this? Um, his name is like Brother Jay, I think. I don't know. I'm going to look him up again. Oh. Yeah. If it's, I might, I mean, am I, I think you saying know Brother is, Okay, yeah. Brother Jay, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I think you know. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that that might be an interesting debate, everyone. So you might want to check that out. All right, so let's uh, let's check this out. So S.J. Thompson again <laughs> says uh, yes. So the question was, uh, should Christians be celebrating Christmas? Um, End time Watchman said the tree is a phallic symbol. <laughs> yeah. Now is that yeah, is that is, is that correct? No, there is no evidence the pine tree was ever used as a phallic symbol, let alone the Christmas tree. I, again, a lot of people don't research it. They just sort of assume it is. Uh, for most ancient Druids, I mean, their, their sacred tree was the oak tree. That's what Druid meant. It meant oak seer or oak knower. They were, they held, of course, this is according to Pliny the Elder, by the way, as well as some other sources like uh, Maximus of Tyre. They noted that, you know, the, the, the Druids held the oak sacred. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the pine tree. And you'd think about it. I mean, the oak tree is the tree of Odin. Because it was a strong tree, it had to be. The pine tree is this flimsy little tree. It was, you know, come on. No, it was always the oak tree. So when people say this, they've not done a lot of research. They just assume it, it's a phallic. Like, uh, where, where do you get that from? Where's your source? They don't have one. Yeah, that would be a weird looking. <laughs> that'd be a weird looking phallic symbol there. Um, and why don't why don't we actually see what the scripture says? Because actually, pine trees do show up in the scriptures. So Isaiah forty one nineteen to twenty. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the cedar, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together, that you may see and know and may consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. Hmm. So right there, God says all these trees are symbols of him, including the pine tree. So why can't when Christians set up a pine tree in their living room, that can be a symbol for God, as he says it is? Well, you should look at that and realize he has made it, mm -hmm. not the pagan deities. So... Pine trees in scripture. There you go. So according to the Bible, when we see things, and as you pointed out, not just the pine tree, but all kinds of things, it should be something where we look at that and say, wow, this is really awesome. God made this. Exactly. All right. That's interesting. All right. Let's check out some more uh, comments here. Um, Shalina said, uh, no, 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 no. So that's four <laughs> no's. So I'm going to count that four times. Um, Tech Map said, uh, jingle bells all the way. Uh, some people are given with the uh, with the thumbs up. Uh, Lewis says it's pagan. JC two fifty one says uh, I believe it is pagan. Uh, we have here Christmas with the thumbs up. Reasonable faith Indy gives a thumbs up. <laughs> Warrior woman gives to the pure all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. Um, Felix says Santa is Odin. Now, what do you think oh. about that one? Is Santa Odin? Yeah, there's no evidence. This is a great little book on this that covers a lot of the English folk traditions. And we know where Santa comes from. It comes from Sinterklaas, which is the Dutch name of St. Nicholas. So historically what happened was after the American Revolution in New York, a lot of Dutch immigrants wanted to start connecting to their roots. Now, even after the Protestant Reformation, according to the Dutch... Uh, they still valued St. Nicholas as this gift-giving saint. Uh, his feast day was on December 6th, and they still celebrated it. But at the time in New York, Christmas was sort of like this drunken festival. People just sort of used it to get an excuse to get drunk. And a lot of people in New York wanted to turn did, Christmas did, into more like a family in our world. Didn't people already have St. Patty's Day for that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think St. Patty's oh, okay. Day was really celebrated like that yet. I mean, a lot of the holidays <laughs> we know are really recent. Like Halloween is really like... A, a 1900s creation. May it's really may recent. Maybe once they st they weren't allowed to uh, just use uh, uh, Christmas for uh, drunken revelry anymore. They were like, all right, we need a new one. <laughs> yeah, let's make up St. <laughs> Patty's Day. I'm just making this up, guys. I don't know what the I don't know what the historical background of St. Patty's Day is. But uh, all right, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and continue. 
But so a lot of Dutch immigrants wanted to connect to their roots. So they started, you know, getting back in touch with Sinterklaas. But, you know, they also want to turn Christmas back into a more family oriented holiday. So they um, you can see this in like, you know, little books from like 1821 called The Children's Friend, where you see depictions of Santa Claus in there for the first time, not as a Catholic saint. They dressed him up to look like an average Dutchman from the time, a big fur hat, a big red coat. And then he sort of morphed to have this type of hat over time. But that's basically where Santa Claus came from, is that they were started to turn Christmas into the holiday it is in New York about 200 years ago. Before that, uh, gift giving was more associated with New Year's Eve. They moved it to Christmas. It was close enough. Uh, they started ex- they started exporting it to the world. Two years ago, when I debated um, Ocean on capturing Christianity, he's a pagan. He thought Santa Claus came from a character in Scandinavia called Joe Lapuki. Well, I hadn't heard that before, so I looked it up after, and actually it's the other way around. In 1927 to about 1950 or so, in Finland, there was a radio broadcaster named Marcus Reutio, and he morphed Joe Lapuki into a Santa figure. Santa comes from St. Nicholas in New York about 200 years ago, and then when he was exported to the world, they actually started to morph him in with you know, pagan deities over there. So it's actually went the other way around. It's just one of those kind of ironies of history. People think Santa came from like Odin or a pagan deity. Well, no, Santa came from St. Nicholas and then they, in Scandinavia in about the 1927 or so. They started to morph him in with pagan deities. But there's no evidence Santa goes back to a pagan deity. He goes back to St. Nicholas. Go figure. So starts with St. Nicholas and then sort of morphs over time into... Uh... So in other words, doesn't start with Odin getting morphed into Santa Claus, starts with St. Nicholas, and then over time morphing into what, what we know as Santa Claus. Yeah, and you know, there was a guy I asked to debate who just brought him up in the live chat. His name was Truth Unedited on YouTube, and I messaged him last year if he would debate me on this. He turned me down. He didn't want to debate this with me live, so just remember that. People bring him up. He mm-hmm. doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, Mighty Mouse here says, to commercialize. Now, that, that's... Uh, that's a that's a kind of a different kind of um, of objection, right? Like you can have any uh, any holiday, uh, and any any holy site, and and, beca- and it can be could become uh, too commercialized, right? So so Jesus had this problem when uh, people were using the the temple grounds to make money, make a profit, and so on like that. He had a he had a problem with the temple mount becoming too uh, commercialized, and uh, I have a. I have a problem with lots of uh, holidays, especially ones that just seem like completely manufactured to get people to buy stuff like like Christmas. You have a celebration, but you know, as each generation goes on, you wanna you wanna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know I know kids nowadays get way more than than me and my friends got when we were kids for Christmas, and we probably got more than the than the previous generation uh, got, and so on. So yeah, things become more. And more commercialized. My, again, my problem is where it's like, like, like Mother's Day. Yeah, I believe you should, you know, you know, love your mothers and you know fathers and all these different holidays and stuff like that. But some of them seem like manufactured just to get you to go out and buy stuff. Um, so for years, I didn't like celeb- I didn't like anything. Valentine's Day. W- didn't want to get you know buy flowers or anything like that. I eventually, I eventually came to think, you know. Even if these are manufactured for people to spend money, it's not, it's not a it's not a terrible thing. You know that that kind of keeps the economy flourishing if people are actually going out and buying stuff from stores and things like that. So I don't have a terrible problem with it. But uh, yeah, that is a kind of different uh, kind of uh, issue with Christmas. So you have one: should Christians celebrate Christmas? And then a, a kind of different question would be: how do you celebrate it? Right? Do you do you celebrate it by you know uh, buying tons of stuff and focusing on uh, you know, what are, what are you focusing on during during Christmas? Uh, any thoughts on that, IP? Yeah, I mean, just remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians about the Lord's Supper and how the Corinthians were abusing it. He didn't say, throw the ba- throw it out now. Now you've corrupted. It's horrible. He said, get back to what really matters. And yeah, there's a lot of material materialism associated with Christmas. Let's get rid of that. Let's get back to what really matters at Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so we don't we should do is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Um, and and one one easy thing to do is if you if you are celebrating if you are celebrating Christmas um, and you're you're giving gifts yeah you, you just set yourself up for an awesome opportunity to tell your kids about the greatest gift ever. I know that's what happened in a upcoming episode of Muhammad's Boom Boom Room. <laughs> um, all right, well we still have we still have a ton of responses. It looks like the yeses are. Winning. So if we judge this by democracy, yeah, we have a we have a lot of no's, um, and we have uh, we have a few undecideds, but it looks like 
it looks like the yays are winning so we can basically pack up and and take off because uh uh, we believe in democracy here and uh the people yeah. the people have spoken all right so well, oh so well, why uh, don't we go over why don't we go over some of these alleged pagan holidays that christmas is supposed to come from yeah yeah i was uh yeah, uh, yeah and, and uh while you're while you're starting those uh those of you who said no now keep in mind everyone there are way 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 more that i that i didn't get to uh I'll, i'm going to be scrolling down uh those of you because uh ip has studied this a lot so those of you who are saying no christians shouldn't celebrate christmas go ahead and give your reasons you may have already given some i'm i'm, I'm scrolling down through the yeses and nos right now uh but go ahead and give us your reasons and we'll bring those up and we'll see if you yeah. if you've got what it takes because there are a lot of people here there are a lot of people here who are saying yes christians should celebrate christmas or and there were people saying yeah if you want to you don't have to but if you want to um so you have positions like that so if you're if you're right and Christmas is actually pagan, you're going to have to correct these guys. And so we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. All right, go ahead, IP. Yeah, so I, my position on it basically is that you don't have to, but you can if you want to. There's nothing against it. I don't see why we have to say, you know, you have to or you shouldn't. There's no obligation, but there's no prohibition either. So, but one of the reasons a lot of people say you shouldn't celebrate Christmas is because they say it comes from a pagan holiday. There's no evidence of that. So the biggest holiday people try to bring up is Sol Invictus, and they say, well, this was celebrated on December 25th. And I say, yes, but what's the first time it was ever said to be on December 25th? Well, you don't see it until the Philokalian calendar, which dates to 354 AD. Okay, that's after the time of Constantine when he came to the throne. That's the only source that ever says there was a pagan holiday on December 25th. And they say, well, but no, Aurelian, Emperor Aurelian from the 3rd century, he set it up that day. No, there's no evidence of that. First of all, the Julio de Claudian Fasti inscriptions, these were the imperial inscriptions of Rome. They say sun festivals were on August 8th, August 9th, August 28th, and December 11th, and maybe October 19th. And the Philokalian calendar says that Emperor Aurelian honored the sun with chariot races every four years, October 19th to the 22nd. Never once do we see until 354 AD is there a pagan holiday on December 25th. It might just be that the Christians were celebrating on the day and they were starting to take over the empire. So the pagans moved their holiday there since they were accustomed to moving their holidays around, as you can see from the Fasti inscriptions. What about Saturnalia? Everyone thinks Saturnalia was on December 25th. No, Saturnalia is right now. Saturnalia, according to Macrobius, started on December 20, or December 17th and for about three days. Uh, during the days of the Republic, it went for about seven days, which means it ended on December 24th. And it has nothing to do with Christmas. It was a day when slaves and masters would switch places uh, they would have like the, they would play games. They would there'd be free speech allowed. That'd be basically it. But doesn't the Julian calendar say that uh, the winter solstice was on December 25th? Yeah, but there was no holiday on that day. They treated it the same way we treat the winter solstice on December 21st. Oh yeah, it's the winter solstice. Anyway, back to work. No one cares. Neither did they. And in fact, that's not the only calendar that said that. They didn't really know. So for example, the calendar of Antiochus says the winter solstice was on the 22nd of December. Pliny the Elder says it was on uh, December 26th. Uh, Clamella says it was on December 23rd. So they didn't really know. You had one calendar that said it was on 25th. Some said it was other days. But either way, there was no holiday actually celebrated on, the, on that day. Where did the date of December 25th come from? Well, according to early church fathers, like the work on solstices and equinoxes, Dionysus, Exegesis, Jerome, St. Augustine, uh, Julius Africanus, a lot of these early church fathers thought that Jesus would be conceived on the same day he died. And the two dates that they calculated was March 25th and, uh, and April 6th. That's why the Eastern Church still says Christmas is on January 6th. Because if you count forward nine months, you get December 25th and you get January 6th. So they thought Jesus would die on the same day he was conceived. So if he's conceived on March 25th, he'll be born nine months later. Hence, you get December 25th. That's where it actually came from. And ironically, even though the pagans had holidays like all year round, they just happened to pick a date, December 25th when no pagan actually had a holiday and same with january 6th um, i'm wondering uh i'm wondering if you could uh review that uh that point again uh because uh it really it really causes a problem for uh for what people are told right the what you hear what you hear especially in the west now is the pagans had their holiday December 25th, and they're celebrating whatever the pagans were celebrating during that time, depending on which holiday you say it was. Um, and then the Christians, and I, I've, I've heard it kind of two ways. Um, 
one, either the Christians who were used to that just kept celebrating it and they just sort of, you know, added added Christ to it, uh, or, or, or two, that the Christians uh, deliberately set up a rival holiday, right? Like, oh, these guys mm -hmm. are celebrating, let's celebrate something, something even cooler. So they set it up then um, to rival it. But what you're pointing out, and I've heard Tony Costa point this out uh, as well, is that that's not how they came up. That's not how they came up with that date. They had uh, in the ancient world a peculiar belief, and there's actually something similar in Islam. I've seen it in Muslim sources that prophets are born on the same day that they die. So the prophet right. is born on the same day that he died. Some sort of view about some sort of harmony in the world or something like that. But there were uh, there were uh, Christians in the ancient world who believed that. Uh, certain people special people are going to be are going to die on the same day that they were conceived and so they actually were calculate people early christians were calculating a date for when they believe that jesus died so so they're, they're calculating okay time of the passover here's the here's the year they're calculating when the passover was when jesus was killed and then they calculate nine months uh, nine months from when he, uh, from when uh, to when he would have been conceived, and then I mean they, they, that would be the same date that he was conceived on, and so then they go nine months from that, which is about when he would have been born on, and they come up with December twenty fifth, and so if if that is actually the case, then their their date had absolutely nothing to do with uh, trying to copy the pagans or trying to set up a rival day to the pagans. It would just be. Uh, yes, they had. They, they have an idea that, that we don't have anymore. Just like early Muslims had an idea that prophets were born on the same day that they would, uh, the same date that they would die. Uh, so we don't have that belief anymore. So we would complete. We would disagree with the calculation and so on. But the point is that was based on some peculiar belief they had, and not on them trying to copy pagan, what pagans were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some people also try to bring up Yule. This was a northern holiday up in like the north celebrated it. Problem, if you read like someone like Pliny the Elder, he says these northern tribes calculated their months according to the moon. Bede says the same thing in the Reckoning of Time. That means Yule would have been on a different day every year. So Snorri Sturluson actually says that King Haakon the Good established Yule on December 25th to coincide with Christmas. And he says this in A History of the Kings of Norway, page 106. Before that, Yule was celebrated on a midwinter night and before uh, for the duration of three nights. So it's actually the other way around. Yule was placed on December 25th to coincide with Christmas after missionaries came into the region. So again, there is no evidence Christmas was placed on December 25th to coincide with a pagan holiday. There's just no evidence of that. I'm sorry. You need better sources if you want to refute me. Mm -hmm. um, and we... we uh... Uh, I had it up here a minute ago. There was another comment um, that I think is. Let me put it this way: if you're if you're claiming that Christmas is pagan, then the question is, what is your evidence, right? Because and that's what we're asking here: what is your evidence that it's a, a pagan holiday? You can't just say, well, I, you know, I've heard that a lot in my life, and that's what I saw on the Big Bang Theory. Um, you, you, you have, or Adam you, ruins everything. Yeah, Adam we, ruins everything. Said it, and he was wrong. Yeah, so so we want to know where you're where you're actually getting this from because if you're incorrect, then then you should want to be correct in in what you're saying. But there are other kinds of objections, uh, like one I just posted a minute ago, where uh, someone said, "But you know, Christmas teaches kids to be materialistic and to be seeking after gifts." And those are those are kind of a, a different again a, a kind of different kind of objection. You're not saying, hey, Christmas is, is pagan or it's not. You're just saying that it's become something that's having a, a bad impact on kids. So so what do you think about that, IP? Yeah, it's the same thing with what Paul talks about in First Corinthians. The Lord's Supper became this pagan-like festival, and the rich were oppressing the poor. And he says, stop doing that. Get back to what matters. Yeah, people can use Christmas in the wrong way. That doesn't mean we throw the baby out with the bathwater. We just get back to what Christmas really means. Abandon the materialism. We're trying to. We've really reduced gifts in my family. We don't buy gifts for everyone. I think we may, we're doing like a secret Santa this year, so we're only getting like one gift for like one member of my family, and it's got to be under twenty five dollars because we're trying to get rid of the materialism. I think more people should try to focus on that. Get rid of the materialism out of Christmas. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, here's one. This is from Sweet Tea Stevens, who uh, apparently has some strong views on this issue. She said, this year, 
we are not doing Christmas in our home anymore. We are doing Hanukkah, which is the festival of dedication from John 10, 22 to 23. We will celebrate Jesus nine days in a row. And I think the, I think the reasoning here is, well, it's a, it's a holiday you find in the Bible, and therefore uh, you celebrate that instead of Christmas. And ju just my initial thoughts would be, um, I, I think this actually goes against you, sweet, sweet tea. Stevens. Um, I think this one goes against you massively here. Um, and the reason is, well, think about what, think about what uh, the, the Feast of Dedication or, or, or Hanukkah was celebrating. So uh, Antiochus Epiphanes uh, defiled the temple, set up all kinds of horrible things. It was, it was under pagan control. And the Jews, this is during the, the what's called the intertestamental period, so between the Testaments, so, so after the last book of the Old Testament, but before uh, we have the Gospels. Uh, during that time, during that time, uh, you had, you had the, 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 the Jewish war there. And when they eventually won, and they went in and rededicated the temple to cleanse and purify it from, uh, the, from the, the, you know, the, the paganism that had that had taken over the temple um so they, they they set up that festival now were they ordered to set up that festival were, were, were they ordered by god through a prophet to set up that festival or did they say here's something that is really really a great moment in jewish history and we want to set up a holiday to remember this so that we never forget what happened here? And you say, yes, well, it's in the New Testament, right? It's in the New Testament a long time after. So notice, it's in the Bible, not because it was ordered by God, but because people, human beings, wanted to celebrate something great. And then later on, it's a, it's a, it's a feast, it's a festival. So, so do, you, do, you, do you see the problem there? The, the, before it's ever mentioned in the Bible, before it's ever mentioned in the Bible, it was already a feast. That that, hum, that 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 humans were celebrating because they wanted to they wanted to celebrate something. So, if the New Testament can give its stamp of approval to this holiday that they came up with during, between the time of the of the two testaments, why would not Christians be allowed to celebrate something that I would think is even greater than the purifying of the temple? Right? If we're talking mm -hmm. about if we're talking about celebrating. Uh, celebrating Christmas, the birth of, of Jesus Christ. So anyway, I think I don't I don't think that not, I'm sure you'll have more comments, but I don't think that one goes in your favor. IP, what are your thoughts and on that one? I don't think Jesus was born on December 25th. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hey, he may have been. I don't care. Uh, Michael Heiser's got his own views. I don't care. It's just a day to remember the incarnation, which is very very important. So you know, I, why can't Christians celebrate? If you don't want to celebrate it, fine. That's up to you. But there's no reason Christians can't. People keep bringing up Jeremiah 10. Come on, that's a really bad argument because people don't read past verse four technically. Oh, I, I actually, I actually have, I actually have this. Uh, uh, I hear that so frequently that I actually pulled, oh, I, I pulled it up on the screen. So let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and click on it. I'll just, I'll just read the passage real quick, and then you can, you can, uh, you can comment. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Let me see here. Let's see if I can get this. All right, here we go. I think. Yes, we got it. All right, so Jeremiah 10. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, learn not the ways of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them, for the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down. Ah, you see that, ladies and gentlemen? A tree from the forest is cut down and that's just like christmas a tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hand of a craftsman they decorate it with silver and gold oh my goodness you pagans decorating your christmas trees with with ornaments they fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move you know we do it a little differently we we put that little stand that the christmas tree stands in we 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 clamp it in there their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. All right, IP. How is that not a total perfect parallel to pagan Christmas trees? Because verse 5 says that they're crafting idols. It says their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak. They have to be carried. They cannot walk. 
That's an idol. They're cutting down trees to craft idols, which they then decorated in gold and silver. That's what we actually have from the ancient Near East. We don't have any evidence of Christmas trees. There is not an Old Testament scholar, Jewish, Christian, atheist, anyone, who says this passage is about Christmas trees. Anyone who says that doesn't know their history, doesn't know the, the scriptures that well. This is about idols being crafted. If you read past verse 4, that's what he keeps talking about, idol crafting, idol crafting, idol crafting. That's, that's what the whole chapter is about. So, yeah, this is, this is about making idols, which no one does. Decorating your house in pine once a year is not making an idol. You know what? Did you know that if you – do any of you have pictures of your grandparents or parents up on the wall? Did you know that pagans worship their ancestors and they put up pictures of their elders and their ancestors up on the walls? Well, I guess if you do that, you're mimicking the pagans and you should stop. Mm -hmm. No. Anyone with half a brain will realize what you're doing is you're just honoring them. You're venera you could be venerating them. That does not mean you're worshiping them mm -hmm. like pagans do. Know the difference. Yep. Don't just say it looks pagan, therefore it is. But again, there's no evidence Christmas trees go back to paganism. All right. Uh, Ricky Cox here says, My position is that it's a holiday that the Roman Catholic Church adopted in the centuries following legalization by Emperor Constantine prior to Christianity being the only declared religion in the... It looks like he continued, but I'd have to scroll down to find it. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, it is something that was sort of set up as an official holiday after Constantine. But... We have evidence that Christians were celebrating it prior to that. Again, I can go back to my uh, sources. Hippolytus, for example, mentions that uh, there's on solstices and equinoxes. Uh, uh, Adrian uh, Nocent dates it to the end of the 3rd century, so that's just before Constantine. Uh, but again, Julius Africanus, Julius Sexist, all these people talk about celebrating Christmas prior to that. I think Justin Martyr even mentions that. Or no, it's Clement of Alexandria who mentions it, but the date was still in dispute during that time. Mm -hmm. Um. Shalina here says, uh, th and this is a, uh, I, I noticed this. So you, you kind of have different categories of, of objections. You have the objections that are along the lines of, uh, you know, Christmas is, is too commercialized. It's bad. It, it has, you know, causes mm -hmm. kids to be obsessed with presents and thus Agreed. losing sight of, of what it's for and stuff. And there you, you can think that Christmas is good, but that people have uh, corrupted it. And as, uh, uh, as someone pointed out, well, what do you do? I mean, pe people corrupt all kinds of things, right? Um, so do you stop? Do you stop reading the Bible because uh, false teachers have corrupted the message and things like that? So uh, you have to clarify yourself on, on, on those objections. Um, then you have the, the claims that it's actually pagan, and we have some people giving us some details, so we're actually going to look at those and look at those stories. Although, oddly enough, I'm looking at some of the different explanations for the pagan origin of Christmas are contradicting each other. So this is... This is going to be interesting. Know? Yeah, they're saying, oh, no, it was this. Oh, no, it was taken from this. Oh, no, it was taken from the Babylonian this. Oh, no, it was taken from the Roman this. So we're going to have to, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of that. But uh, this objection right here, uh, we see, and this is similar to um, to uh, what Sweet Tea was saying. Uh, Christmas is not God-given. First century church did not have Christmas. So the, the claim here is just, uh, hey, you know, I don't care where it came from. The, the objection here would be human beings do not have a right to set up a religious feast or a religious festival or a holiday human beings are not allowed to do it and so once that new testament has been finished christians are not allowed to celebrate anything else and therefore if you do it you're you're, you're following something that's man-made not from god evil wicked ip what do you think about these kinds of objections because there's a there's a bunch of them there's kind of a category of them yeah it doesn't make sense i mean it's not it's just because it's man-made i mean the internet's man-made so what yeah, I mean Thanksgiving is man-made. Fourth Sh of July is man-made. Shalina, did first-century Christians have the internet? <laughs> did they have computers? Did they have did they have iPhones? Did they have I mean MacBooks? Think about this: no one is dressing like Jesus did. We're 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 following the the clothing customs of man. We're dressing like modern Westerners. That's a tradition of man. Is that evil? These people don't really think through their arguments. They just go, Christmas, not in Bible, therefore bad. It, mm -hmm. It's a horrible argument, mm -hmm. and they don't really think these things through. Um, all right, and then we have a, a category of objection where people are saying something but not providing the slightest bit of, of evidence. Uh, so Gabriel here says, Christmas is pagan, so if you are Christian, you shouldn't celebrate other gods. <laughs> so. Well, there's no evidence it is pagan. I mean, someone named JC earlier mentioned Yule. And he says, look, it mentions Yuletide, Yule logs. Doesn't that go back to the pagan holiday of Yule? 
No. Let me quote from this book again. The word Yule in various spellings means a loosely defined midwinter period, not a single day, in the early languages of most Germanic and Scandinavian countries. So there was a guy named Sir Henry Yule from the 1900s. Uh, Yule was just a word that meant a midwinter period, but it also was a pagan holiday from time before. But in English, it also meant a midwinter period. So Yule logs, where did they first show up? Do they go back to paganism? No. The first time you ever hear of Yule logs, it's in Robert Herrick's uh, poetry collection. 1648, that's when they were written, number 784, and it's called a Christmas log. It's not until um, Aubrey's in the West Riding of Yorkshire on Christmas Eve, dating to 1686, is it called a Yule log. And that was just people were burning logs in the winter, so they called them Yule logs because that meant a midwinter period. Yule logs don't go back to paganism. They don't show up till the 1600s. So again, there's no evidence. As they say in this book, the antiquity of the word Yule cannot prove the customs age. There's no evidence it goes back to paganism. So people, again, have not done their research. They just assume it's pagan. Did, did, did you say that's an entire book? <laughs> on... <laughs> wow. This is actually a, a, a history of English folklore. Oh, okay. But I have other e-books. Um, for example, I thought I have, you had an entire book on the history of Yule, and I was going to be like, no. wow. That sounds like a real page turner. There must be like three <laughs> copies of that in the world. You've got one of them. I have entire books on the history of Christmas, like uh, Tanya Gulovich, mm -hmm. in Encyclopedia of, Encyclopedia of Christmas. I have um, Bruce David Forbridge Christmas, A Candid History. So I know all of the history of this. Uh, ke uh, just, uh, Kevin McDonald said, David, you're taking the easiest post to refute. No, I haven't gotten down to them yet. I looked at that. Say, so I have two screens here. I have one where they're <laughs> going live, and I have one where I'm scrolling through them. And here's the problem: if I scroll down to the last ones, look for them. People say, "Ah, oh, you skipped mine." So I'm trying to I'm trying to get through uh, any sort of uh, I'm trying to break them down into categories and make sure we get through them. But I am I am not even a quarter away down to the most recent comment. So just trying to get those. But yeah, uh, we're yeah. be be patient. We're going to get through them. Um, so we have uh, you shouldn't celebrate other gods, Gabriel. Yes, we agree. You shouldn't celebrate other gods. Well, our question is, how is uh, celebrating Christmas, celebrating other gods. That's what that's what we're asking. Uh, JC two fifty one says, look at Nordic paganism. It parallels to Christmas, and I find this interesting because I'm uh, again just skimming the comments as I know they were coming up down here. It was uh, ah this was this was Babylonian in origin, Roman in <sighs> origin, um, and and uh, Nordic paganism, and so basically the paganism is coming from from everywhere, <laughs> guys. So, you know, some of, at least some of you have to be making this up, right? At least some of you have to be just making up stuff or, you know, I heard this on a show or I heard this in my classroom or I heard my friends say this. Guys, it, you, anyone could just say something, right? I could say I could say Christmas came from aliens, right? I could say it. I could say, ah, Christmas came from Nazis. Before the Nazis, there was no Christmas. You could say anything you want, right? We're asking what you can actually defend. And please, please, please... Um, Give us give us some claims that you can actually de, uh, defend here. Uh, so, w well, would would you, would you agree with that? That Nordic paganism uh, parallels Christmas? No, we already debunked that one earlier by going over the origins of Yule. It, it again, the Norse calculated their seasons according to the moon. Yule moved around. It wasn't until King Hyakon, according to Snorri Sturluson, was Yule placed on December twenty fifth. We're talking around the year one thousand A.D. So, there's no evidence. Christmas parallels Yule. Yule was celebrated according to early authors like Adam of Brenham that they sacrificed a human sacrifice over in a well. Uh, they went into the temple and they feasted and got drunk with giant fires. It has nothing to do with Christmas. That's just a typical pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. People keep bringing up Babylon. These are people who have really not studied because that all comes from a guy called Alexander Hislop who wrote a book called The Two Babylons about 200 years ago or so. And he just made a bunch of stuff up. He made up stuff about Nimrod that's not true. The Babylonians never. Whoa, you're saying. Nimrod. Whoa, you're saying people can make stuff up? Oh no, of course not. Yes, oh, man. obviously. And that some people, a lot of they, the reason they get away with this is because a lot of people fall for what for what they say. Guys, by by the way, notice they say the exact same things about Jesus, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you, you you can you can have Christians objecting to uh, to Christmas and so on, but. The you know hey the 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 pagan the pagan origins of this the pagan origins of that almost every detail about about Jesus you've got atheists writing books claiming that it came from some pagan origin 
right? That should clue you in that maybe people who are complaining about pagan origins don't always don't always know what they're talking about, or sometimes they have alternative agendas, and so you might need to to take a closer look. Um, again, yeah. again, I, you know, I I don't. If if you want to show that 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 Christmas is pagan, I'm I'm giving I'm giving everyone the opportunity here, but um, yeah, you're gonna have to give us something that IP here can't refute. All right, now, now yeah, well, people pe- people brought up mistletoe. Oh, mistletoe must go back to paganism. Actually, no. Uh, once again, uh, the first time we hear of mistletoe, it's in about the 1600s. William Coles mentions it as a decoration in his book, The Art of Simpling. Uh, Robert Hendrick, once again, re- re- mentions it in his poetry collection, but only mentions it as a typical decoration. Guess what grows in Britain around this time of the year? Mistletoe. What do you use as decorations? Plants that are in season. Uh, it, it doesn't show up as the kissing of the mistletoe. It doesn't show up until about the end of the 1700s, and it's among the Victorian servant class. It sort of like grows out from there. Hmm. But wasn't it a pagan sacred thing? Well, we don't really know. Pliny the Elder in Natural Histories wrote of the Gauls in France that they had this sacred plant called mistletoe. We're not even sure if it was the same one, but they thought it cured animal infertility and it would cure poison. And they would only, they would, here's the funny part, they only thought it was sacred if they found it growing on oak. So again, that has nothing to do with Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, Mountain Smoke here says if you can't stand up against Christmas as hard as that is how are you going to stand against the mark I'm assuming he's talking about the mark of the beast and uh, actually Mountain Smoke this this actually gives us a, a chance uh, to, to to clarify um, we're wondering why she would why we should stand up against Christmas because I mean if you're comparing it to standing against the mark of the beast then you obviously believe this is very diabolical and we're asking why is it diabolical? Why is it evil? Why is it something horrible? And when we ask for reasons, we get a bunch of stuff that people heard and and can't actually defend and a bunch of comments that are just not based in reality. But notice here. Um, so if you want to parallel it to the mark of the beast, um, you'd have to identify something as the mark of the beast. And we're not sure you're right. Right. We're wondering if you're right. So suppose, <laughs> so, you know, I'm wearing a watch. Right. Suppose you say wearing a watch is the mark of the beast. And I start disagreeing with you, going, no, that's not that's not actually what a watch is. I, I disagree with you, and I start arguing with you. I say, ah, how how could you're not standing against the mark of the beast? No, I'm disagreeing with you on whether this is the mark of the beast. I'm disagreeing with you about that, right? So right now we're talking about Christmas, and there are people who are saying it's this horrible, evil things. And and when we ask them to defend that claim, they start giving things which IP keeps showing are completely false. So yeah. you're saying I should identify Christmas as a pagan holiday based on a bunch of myths? Uh, if so, I might as well identify this as as the the mark of the beast or something like that. If we're just making things up, right? All right, let's. Uh, uh, did you want to add anything to that, real quick? No, it makes perfect sense. People just sort of think whatever they want, and then they assume that's the truth or that's a fact. I mean, they don't have any sources to back it up. If you want to refute me, find some early sources. Find an early Roman inscription, maybe an early Roman author who says they celebrated Christmas. I mean, even atheists. Like I remember Seth Andrews a couple of years ago on the Thinking Atheist made a bunch of nonsensical claims about Christmas. It goes back to like the Egyptians or something. Mm-hmm. Of course, he didn't do any research. There's no evidence it goes back to pagan mm-hmm. or, or any sort of pagan origin. Ensign Watchman says Christmas used to be outlawed in America in the late 1800s because yeah. of its pagan roots. Yeah, well, they were wrong. Just because a bunch of Puritans or pilgrims thought it was, that doesn't mean it, it actually was. I mean, they also thought Native Americans were some of the lost 10 tribes of Israel. Okay, just because they said it, does that make it true? No, mm-hmm. they were clearly wrong. So what? It was outlawed in America by people who didn't understand the actual history. Uh huh. So, so the, the 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 question here would be, you know, what if what if they outlaw the the Bible or something like that? Or if we're talking about the mark of the beast, what if they outlaw you if you don't get the mark of the beast? Would that would that then make them right? So so the question here, if you want to say, hey, it was outlawed, you have to say, okay, were they right? Do you do you think people do you think uh, do you think Puritan Christians in the 1800s had a better idea of the history of Christmas than we do today? Even though we have you know far more research and and far more access to uh, to the history of these things. In other words, you'd have to say that the Puritans in the 1800s were really really good scholars of the history of Christmas and they really really knew its origin because I have to say if I were to if I were to hand over the laws of the country to a lot of people in the in the in the chat here I think a lot of people would say yes outlawed ban it it should be illegal and so we're we're 
we're, we're asking why. Were these people right? If these people were right and it had pagan origins, then you should be able to uh, show that their reasons were correct. In other words, you should just be able to put forward the same research. See, this is what they found out when they researched it, and I've done the same research, and here's why it was pagan. Yeah, and someone mentioned in the chat that there was 12 days of Saturnalia. Mm -hmm. Nope. No early source says that. The longest it was was seven days during the days of the Roman Republic. If it started on December 17th, it ends on December 24th. Never goes back there. Uh, what about Christmas trees? Someone brought up Christmas trees. Okay, the first time Christmas trees show up, it's in Eastern Europe around the 1500s. Uh, it's first mentioned in a German town called um, A-L-S-A-S-E. I don't know how to pronounce it. Alsace. Uh, it's from an ordinance from 1561 on heights of Christmas tree. They can't be above a certain height. Uh, that's where we first hear about them. Some have legends. They say it goes back to St. Boniface, who cut down a sacred oak tree and then pointed to the pine tree as the symbol of Christ. Some say it goes back to Martin Luther. Mm, not a lot of evidence. We're not really sure. What scholars most likely think where the Christmas tree came from is it more from something called a paradise tree. So around the medieval times. That sounds pagan. Clay is cut. Oh, actually not. It's actually uh, okay. kind of not. Well, it sounded like it though. Yeah. Now, around, around the medieval period, uh, plays got popular. And they started doing, like, Bible plays. Uh, the feast day of Adam and Eve is, lo and behold, December 24th. So they did an Adam and Eve play. And you needed a tree. Well, in Germany, there's not a lot of trees that are in bloom because they're all dead. So they got a pine tree. And they decorated with apples and sometimes wafers used in the Eucharist. And they used that as their paradise tree. Well, and you, as you know, in medieval Europe, you don't let food go to waste. So most scholars think that that just sort of morphed on a Christmas, that on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, they'd gather around the paradise tree and they'd eat the apples and the wafers off of it. And that just slowly morphed into a Christmas tree. That's what most scholars think. Now, we're not entirely sure, but that seems to be the most likely explanation is that's the closest precursor. Some think there was a, an earlier Christian precursor in Portugal, some th say Estonia, some say Lithuania. We're not really sure, but it doesn't really show up to around the 1500s and it seems to have just morphed from a paradise tree. Mm -hmm. um, Norma here says uh, I've read it has a pagan origin well we don't doubt that you've you, you've read that it has a <laughs> pagan origin um, I've read that the entire story of Jesus is, is based on uh, pagan myths and legends we're, we're asking what, what's the actual evidence for that and then it was instituted by the Catholics well those are those are kind of two separate things there so it, does it come from the, the does it come from pagans or or from Catholics, or are you saying that it was instituted by Catholics who are Im who are imitating the pagans? Guys, that's what we're asking for. Show us this. Every example we get, it's, ah, oh, Christmas trees, uh, they're pagan. Ah, oh, the Yule log, that's pagan. Ah, oh, the mistletoe, that's pagan. And it's turning out that there's no good evidence for anything you're saying here. So, guys, okay, so l l let's suppose hypothetically that Christmas is this really bad thing. Do you, also, do you not also believe it's a bad thing to sort of spread around myths? Right? Like, isn't that a bad thing, too? In other words, suppose, supposing you're right. Supposing you're right, the reasons you're giving don't seem to be factually correct. Now, don't you believe that it's not good to spread false claims be just because you heard them? I'm not saying you're, you're a horrible, evil person for doing that. I mean, you know, we all believe lots of things that we've heard throughout our lives. But when we're specifically in a situation where we're saying, hey, what is your actual evidence for this? And you're telling us something that you heard on, on, some, on, you know, on some video. Here, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. So fly fishing here says... Uh, Fly Fishing said, uh, A rude awakening, Michael Rood, has much info. Pagan Day, December 25th. So, Michael Rood no, he, has given... He's a moron. Oh, yeah? He doesn't know what he's talking about. He makes up stuff left and right. And, whoo, he's like off the deep end in terms of scholarship. He doesn't... He never gives really good sources. He claims all the Babylonian crap. I mean, what, what do you I, say? I, he's just wrong. I thought it was Nordic stuff, or Roman stuff, or Egyptian stuff. Oh, you know whatever you want it to be they just sort of make it up as they go along yeah they must have i mean this but gosh guys coming up with christmas if they were like incorporating the pagan elements of completely different cultures from completely different times this was some this was an amazing amazing conspiracy here um so yeah. like, so fly fishing once again if you're saying he has much info and you're familiar with that you've watched it you've agreed with it you can obviously tell us what the claim is so we can examine it right and give me your sources what early source mentions christmas is pagan is it in the egyptian book of the dead 
Is it any sort of Babylonian inscriptions? How about Roman inscriptions? Romans has a lot, have a lot of inscriptions. We can go through all the fast eye inscriptions today. We can go through Pliny. We can go through Columella. Uh, we can go through all of these early sources. No one mentions Christmas traditions. No one mentions any sort of holiday or any sort of pagan holiday on December 25th until 354 AD. Where's your evidence? Um I've been I've been focusing on the uh, you know the the claims that it's it's pagan here, but uh, Mark Cyril uh, pointed out um, angels celebrated Christmas and they asked the shepherds to celebrate. So uh, what do you think? Do you think in terms of what we read um, about the angels celebrating that that we have that we have reason that we should be celebrating the the birth of Christ? I think we should be celebrating it. Now, some people say I'm not going to celebrate it on December 25th. I'm going to celebrate it every day of every year. Okay, fine, good for you. But just because some of us want to set up a special day to remember how important and how wonderful the Incarnation was, well, we can. We don't really know the day Jesus was born because it's not important. What's important is that it actually happened, and we can set up a day to honor it. Just like we're not really sure if the pilgrims actually did have a feast of Thanksgiving on the day we constantly celebrated on. They may have, but we're just remembering and honoring the founding of America. Can't we do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um Laura Hunter here says, if you research the roots to Christmas, then yes, it's proven to have a background to paganism. I'm pointing this out because the vast majority of the comments seem to be like this, right? Like, it yeah, is paganism. It. If you study it, if you listen to this guy's talks or this guy's video, um, then, yeah, it's clearly pagan. And, yeah, gosh, Laura, I mean, we're, 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 we're pretty much begging for any like just a specific example of a pagan origin uh that can actually be defended with early yeah, sources they, they say that if people point to michael rude jim staley both of them are they don't know what they're talking about they don't give any actual sources so in other words they they're, they're, like this Nimrod so crap. they're the sorts of guys who would you know go look through a bunch of books or look through some you know internet articles and then say it all and then people who aren't questioning what they're being told will just accept it the way again lots of atheists will be on their channels and saying ah you know the the myth of jesus virgin birth that was taken from this pagan story and uh, you know the the resurrection that was taken from this pagan story and and so you know along the way guys you can you can say anything with a lot of confidence and you can say you read it and if you want to believe it enough, just like there are lots of atheists who just want to believe that Christian Christianity had a pagan origin, and so they hear their guys saying this, and they say, "Oh, well, yeah, aha, Christianity, pagan origins." You can do the same thing with other things. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that. But in the process, a lot of you are doing that. You're doing the exact same thing that people do to explain the pagan origins of of Christianity and so on. Yeah, and if you go back and you watch earlier parts of this Hangout, I went through and I gave you all the primary sources, scholars, people who are actually historians. You can go look these things up. Go look up the uh, the poetry collections I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Look up oh, what Pliny the Elder says about the Druids and the Gaelic tribes. Look up uh, uh, anything in the Philokalian calendar. You can see all this evidence yourself. I have nothing to hide. I'm giving you the actual sources. Why is it that Michael Rood and Jim Staley and all these others who say it's pagan don't want to give you these primary sources? That's that's weird. Yeah, guys, so so let, let me explain what I mean here, right? Um, it's very easy for someone to say, let, let's use an example. Did you know that the pagans, the pagans and their celebration of gobbledygook, uh, they brought an evergreen tree into their house and they put presents under it so that they could bow down to the tree and receive the presents. Isn't that, isn't that pagan? And, and everyone can go, wow. What we're saying is if that's correct, then it shouldn't be very, if you, unless you're making that up or unless you're, you're getting it from someone who made it up and keep in mind, you could be getting for getting, you could be hearing it from someone who heard it from, who, for someone who heard it from, from, from someone else who heard it from someone who made it up. Our point is, if that's true, and if that is based on evidence, assuming you didn't just get this from Revelation, right? You might have said, ah, I got a special revelation that that's where the Christmas tree came from. If you're claiming that you actually have evidence for it, then we're just saying, give us the source, right? Give us the source. Here is the source that predates any Christian use to show that this is what the pagans did with it. And and I don't know. It seems, it seems like something easy to do. We have tons. I would also. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'd also remind people, people who say this is pagan, they're like, we should be celebrating the Jewish holidays. Please read this book. 
It's written by a scholar. His name is um, Richard Hess. He's one of my favorite Old Testament scholars. He went and he found the origin of a lot of the Jewish festivals we know in the Old Testament. And what he notes is that they align with festi- pagan festivals celebrating the god Dagon at a city called Emmer. The Jewish festivals align up pretty much on almost the same dates. Now what he notes is this is this is evidence that we can use to argue that it actually goes back to the uh, Bronze Age that the Israelite religion was not made up during the Babylonian exile, we can use this evidence to argue that these festivals go back to the Bronze Age, the time of Moses, because that's when Emmer was thriving city. About uh, about the, when the Iron Age came along, it basically was destroyed. It was reduced to a very – it had very little influence after that, basically. And so he says that the, the, the Jewish festivals were crafted as sort of polemics against the pagan festivals so the Jews would not be lured over to celebrating pagan festivals. You can't go celebrate these pagan festivals – because we have to celebrate our own festivals for Yahweh on these days. So they set up their own festivals on pagan holidays, on the dates, to sort of like do this sort of like counterculture thing. Does that mean they're evil? No. Just be, And if the Christians ever did the same thing, well, let's say there's some sort of hidden conspiracy that they set up December 25th on a pagan holiday. So what? That's the same thing Moses did, and the evidence supports it. So you, people don't really think about this type of stuff. What about Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai probably was originally a mountain dedicated to the god Sin. Remember, before the Israelites got to Mount Sinai, they had to go through the desert of Sin to get to Mount Sinai. Well, that was, that was Yahweh's mountain originally, so he just took it over again, even though it was probably they probably worshipped the pagan god on that before Moses showed up. God just sort of took it over. Again, God can reclaim anything he wants. He, he owns all the days of the year. He owns all the trees all the mistletoe, all the mountains, he can do whatever he want. So people are worried like, oh no, mistletoe, Christmas trees. Come on, use some common sense here. Um, Jacob Brown had a uh, had a question for you um, in the Super Chat. Sorry, I haven't gotten to the Super Chats yet. I've been sort of scrolling through in, in, in order here. Um, mm-hmm. But Jacob said, uh, did Ocean Keltoy ever get back to you uh, about the historical origin of... Julepuki and how it supposedly influenced Santa? Yeah, uh, so that was the debate I had on capturing Christianity a couple years ago with mm-hmm. him. And no, we never, you know, we just kind of moved on with our lives. But I looked up Joe Lepuki, and again, Joe Lepuki was not a Santa figure until 1927. Uh, Santa Claus was basically being celebrated in New York early 1800s. So in 1927 in Finland, a radio broadcaster named Marcus Ratuio morphed Joe Lepuki into a Santa figure for Finnish children. So, no, it's actually the other way around. Santa changed Joel Lepuki. Santa was not based on Joel Lepuki. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just wanted to point out to, uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> someone down here is uh, making fun of the uh, of the uh, the Jeremiah 10. But uh, I keep seeing this over and over again, right? So, uh, guys, I want to I want to point out um, when you're when you're making a claim, right? You're making a claim. Ah, it's paganism. And I know I've done my research. And we're asking for reasons. And your main case, see, I haven't studied this, right? I haven't gone out. I haven't. I haven't done a lot of a lot of study. There are people who have, like IP. Uh, again, my friend Tony Costa. He's done a lot of research in this. I haven't. So you could you could actually convince me if you had some good evidence, right? But when the people who are arguing most fervently start giving objections, where even though I haven't done the research, I can examine this one very quickly. I can think about the problem here very quickly. <laughs> And you start saying Jeremiah 10, and anyone who's read Jeremiah 10, this isn't talking about this isn't talking about the idea of a Christmas tree. It's talking about cutting down a tree and making an idol out of it, right? And we all agree here. We all agree you shouldn't you shouldn't make an idol out of a out of a tree, right? You should worship the living God, not a not a dead tree. The idea that you're taking that as your main biblical proof and that so many people are taking this as your main biblical proof that, ah, this is pagan, that immediately makes me think, okay, this is a person who's not thinking very clearly about this, who is so diametrically opposed to Christmas that he will accept anything. He'll accept anything as a reason to reject it, even if the reason clearly and indisputably has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas, right? So the fact that you're going, ah, Jeremiah 10, that makes me not trust you. Now, when you're saying, oh, well, you know, I re- I did this research, I'm already thinking, wait a minute, you can't even read words off a page, apparently. Or you can read words off a page, but you're so biased that you, you can't be trusted in what you're saying. 
And you're the ones who are telling me, oh, but you know, uh, if you research in, uh, in the Babylon and this and that, well, guys, you, you've already destroyed your credibility here, right? Everything IP says, he starts, he starts giving you sources. Everything you guys are saying, the things that I can actually look at and verify, you turn out to be wrong. So I have to say, you're not, yeah. you're, you're not, you're not making a good case here. And I can, I gave a lot of primary sources so far, but if you want books on this, see, read, see Tanya Gulovich's Encyclopedia of Christmas, a Bruce David Forbes Christmas: A Candid History. There are papers on the origin of Christmas, like Stephen Hitchman's paper, Sol Invictus, The Winter Solstice and the Origins of Christmas, Thomas Schmidt calculating December 25th as the birth of Jesus in Hippolytus canon. So yeah, just go look up these sources. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to hide here. I have all the primary sources. I have all the scholarly sources. And by primary source, I mean going back to like ancient times, like Pliny the Elder or the Philokalian calendar, the Fasti inscriptions. The Fasti inscriptions, the imperial Fasti inscriptions are online. If you search them, you will find them. You can read what they all say in English. I have done that. They're mm -hmm. uh, quite a dry read. There's only one time December 25th shows up, and it was a day that a consul was elected. And that was random. That didn't happen the same time every year. That was just, you know, it just happened to fall on December 25th one year. Um, so fly fishing here says, go back to ancient Babylon and then, uh, and then teaching. So yeah, if, no evidence. If we do, if we do, if we, if we, do you mean like physically go back? Like we build a time machine and go back or we're going to go back to the ancient Babylonians. We're going to find them bringing uh, Christmas trees into their houses and, and uh, buying themselves presents on uh, December twenty yeah, fifth. Is that what you're saying? Or, or well, I don't know what you mean. They lived in they lived in Mesopotamia. They didn't have a lot of pine trees there. Oh. The Babylonians. Okay, first of all, this shows you they don't know the history. Which Babylonians are we talking about? The Neo Babylonians or the old Babylonian Empire, the one the Amorite Empire? Are we going back prior to that, like the Sumerians? Uh, what ba what about during the time when the uh, the Kassites ruled Babylon? How about that period? Mm. What what period? And the main festival celebrated with like the Enumialish festival that happened in March. There is no evidence of any Babylonian festival on December 25th. Once again, give me a source. Mm -hmm. You don't have one. Yeah. Nimrod wasn't a deity in this in, in there. The, the head deity in Babylon was Marduk. Um, yeah, I'm looking. People just aren't getting the point here. Uh, so I'm looking at the very the most recent comment here. Uh, Janesh said, do not learn the way of the heathen. That is all it need. So... Janesh, have you not been paying attention at all? You're saying do not learn the way of the heathen, right? So don't 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 imitate them in the ways in which they do like wrong things, right? So in other words, if you're talking about if you're talking about you know heathens and so on, they can be doing you know child sacrifice, whatever. Just don't 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 imitate those things, right? What we're saying is, what is your evidence that that Christmas came from heathens? That's a simple. It's a guys. It's a simple question, right? We hear all the claims, and it's a very simple request. Give us the actual source that shows where the Christmas tree came, where this came from. Uh, Gabriel here actually has one. Oh, she good. claims, she says, because the evergreen tree is where Odin sacrificed himself to himself, according to Norse mythology. So, nope. What? No. That, how do you know? How have no you, how have you researched all of this? Odin, the sacred tree of Odin was the oak. Again, this is in Tales of St. Boniface. This is in Pliny the Elder. This is um, in Maximus of Tyre mentions this. The pine tree is never associated with Odin. There's, what's your source? Is it in Snorri Sturluson? Where are you getting this? Again, they don't have a source. Odin didn't sacrifice himself under a pine tree. Again, what's your evidence? Mm -hmm. And again, going back to this don't learn the way of the heathen. Yeah, read the context. It's talking about how they worship gods. You know, we have evidence of circumcision in Old Kingdom Egypt before the time of Abraham, okay? There's animal sacrifice in other pagan nations. Were the Jews not supposed to do that because a pagan did that at one point? No, God commanded them to. God is saying don't do the things the heathens do that are sinful. Just because a heathen may eat a sandwich, that doesn't mean we should never eat sandwiches. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, uh, I'm having a problem in that uh, the comments are coming up way faster than I could possibly get through them, so... Uh... Here again, I am not even, I find myself not even one quarter of the way through the comments um, because they come up much, they come up faster than, than I can read them and uh, control the other things here. So uh, why, why do, uh, those of you who've been, who've been following the chat, why don't you tell me what you think the best, the best objections were? Uh, 
point me towards anyone who's given an actual good source and I'll try to have those. So, uh, so just so you guys know, I, I've been trying to focus on every sort of uh, comment that's come up uh, right now. I'm going to transition to specifically people who are trying to give some sort of some sort of evidence for the claim that Christmas is uh, here's, is pagan. Here's someone same LJ said said the Romans gave gifts at Saturnalia, and I'm like, uh, well, yeah, that's true. It wasn't the main point of Saturnalia, but I mean, we give gifts on Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, Halloween, technically. Gift giving is a common custom in numerous holidays. I mean, it's in Homer, it's in, or it's in the Bible at certain times. Yeah, like are you brought, are you gift, saying Solomon and King David? Are you saying that anyone who gives a gift is imi- is is a pa- is imitating pagans because the pagans give gave gifts before you did? Is is that what your claim is? You did you know the pagans ate food? <laughs> they ate food. They eat the same foods you do. Isn't that interesting? They, yeah, they gave. The wait, they gave gifts. Simple. Oh my goodness, they gave gifts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's gifts giving in the Bible. I mean, what do you want? Uh, I mean, just because a pagan does something doesn't mean it's magically evil now. All right. Here's here's an interesting point though. What about Acts 17, where Paul adds a from a takes from a pagan poem. That's true. Two. And he puts it in the Bible. A couple pagan poems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Acts 17:27, uh, he says, "Some of your own poets say, for it, for in Him we live and move and have our being." Oh no! Pagan poetry and, has been added to the Bible. And, now. and Does by, that mean it's and evil? by the way, those poems there were about Zeus. Yep. Th- those that that was a poem about Zeus. Paul quotes it and agrees with it, but he's applying it to the one true God. Right? He's saying he's saying because there was there was apparent. It sounds if you read the poem, it actually sounds like a monotheistic version of of Greek paganism where where Zeus isn't just, you know, isn't just chief among a, among the gods. He is like supreme in his power. And Paul basically says, look, you guys even have this idea. You guys even have the idea of this supreme, this supreme deity who's supreme overall. He says, you even, you even have this idea uh, because, uh, you know, in, 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 ancient Greek mythology, you know, Zeus is some guy over there on this mountain. Zeus comes down and, and, and does stuff. Whereas in that poem, it's in him we live and move and have our being. So it's some sort of omnipresent belief. And so he's saying, look, even you pagans have have stumbled upon this, right? So you, it's not like it's not like you, you can't get to the, the truth about this. But guys, I could just imagine some of you being there. <laughs> You would have jumped all over Paul. Paul, you're clearly a false apostle and a false teacher. Everyone who condemns you is right. I can't believe that you're quoting that pagan thing, trying to make a point to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now it's in Scripture. Now it's part of Scripture. Again, God can reclaim anything he wants. If a pagan one day worshipped a pine tree, that wouldn't magically make it evil. Um, here you have a comment. It All it says is, Obelisk of Nimrod. <laughs> okay. There. No. Uh, there is no you, evidence. You Nimrod didn't. Had you didn't. Obelisk. You didn't hear me. Obelisk of Nimrod. You're burned. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> uh, if this guy doesn't celebrate Christmas, then why is he wearing a Santa hat? Burn. Oh. Some uh, are some people not following where we've been going at all. He's the one defending. Christmas. We're not. We're not saying that Christmas is pagan. We're offering people an opportunity who say it's pagan, to, uh, to give any evidence for their claims. No one has been able to do it. Although, although again, I'm I'm working rapidly to scroll through, the comments. Here, but go ahead. Someone someone in the comment section just said, "Here's a source: The Viking Spirit: An Introduction to Norse Mythology and Religion, written by Daniel McCoy." I just looked him up. In less than ten seconds, he's not even a scholar. Okay, what page number what in the book says some sort of pagan tradition is associated with Christmas? Yeah, and guys, does he give it? Does he give any primary sources? He's not a scholar. Why should we take his word? I've given you primary sources and actual scholars. Just throwing some random book out by someone who's not a scholar is not a good argument. Yeah, guys. Um, when you're when we say a source, we don't mean I read it on this book or I, in this book or I heard it on this show or I saw it in this video, right? We're saying. If you're claiming that the pagans had their pagan gift-giving festival around the Christmas tree with the Yule log and the mistletoe on December 25th before Christians ever did that, we're saying 
obviously, if that claim is based on any sort of evidence, you could give us the evidence, right? So you could give us, you could give us, here's the source. It's in Suetonius. And Suetonius, the, the ancient historian, writes about this. Pre That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about, oh, I saw it in that book. You can see anything in a book. Right? Right? That's like us yeah. saying, what's your, what's your source for saying that Jesus is based on pagan myth? Oh, I, I read it in that silly atheist book over there. Okay, yeah, we know, we know you can find people who are saying stuff. We're asking what the, the actual ancient source is that... That refutes the that refutes the claim that that IP is making here. So that's what we're asking yeah. for. And again, I, I, have, I, I haven't got ancient sources. Yeah, I haven't I mean, gotten I through most of the comments, but and uh, what what I see again most of the time here is just people just stating it over and over again. All the Christmas symbols have pagan roots, including the hat he is wearing. <laughs> okay, where's your evidence? This hat comes from Saint Nicholas. So again. In the 1800s in New York, they dressed St. Nicholas up like a common Dutchman from the time. Originally, he had a big red coat and like a brown hat. And then it slowly morphed into this hat around about 100 years ago or so. It took time, but there's no evidence that goes back to paganism. Is there any depictions of Odin with his hat? How about Thor? Do you have any depictions of ancient Babylonians wearing these hats? No. I, I know. I've looked a lot. There's, there's none. Again, read some sources on it. Um, here you have again, it starts with Nimrod, then we get to Santa Claus. So there, there's the refutation. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, that comes from Alexander Hislop, made it all up. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, Mark Russell here says, what's the history of the lie that Christmas is pagan? Who started the myth? So this must actually oh. go back quite a ways. Do you, do you know where this goes back to? I, I do actually. So around about the mid 1800s is when archaeology started to be discovered. And about that time, a lot of like pseudo intellectuals started to publish stuff. Uh, some were some were scholars, to be fair, like Jacob Grimm, uh, but other people were not, like Alexander Hislop. And they just started to publish a bunch of stuff and about the origins of Christmas, uh, origins of certain customs, holidays. Uh, Jacob Grimm did this. Alexander Hislop did this. Some of the Jesus mysticists, like Gerald Massey, did this kind of stuff. And they just made stuff up, and people believed them mm -hmm. because archaeology was just starting to come out. People mm -hmm. were getting excited about it, so they just were picking up anything they could find on it. And it just continues to this day. That's how successful they were. Mm -hmm. But a lot of actual scholars today are showing that there's no evidence to go back there. And again, give me primary sources. I will go look at the inscriptions. Yeah, guys. Um, uh, uh, again, I, I always think of I always think of parallels uh, that are along similar lines. But I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, the the story of Galileo um, being tortured and so on by the by the church and this being part of the eternal war between uh, the church and uh, and science and so on um, that actually goes back to the to the 1800s where the guy who was who was putting that forward was actually a, a rabid anti-Catholic and it was because he didn't like Catholics coming over from Europe. He didn't want Catholics coming to America. So he tried, he, he used that to, sh he, he, he used that, ex that historical uh, event, the, the trial of Galileo to argue that the, the Catholic church had a war against, against science. And therefore we need to stop Catholics and so on from, because they'll, they'll stop science. But then the, the, the myth was sort of passed on. And the, the, the point here is, yes, you had Galileo and he was put on house arrest. It wasn't it wasn't really because of his scientific views. Right. It, it was it was he insulted the pope. Um, he had he violated a contract. Uh, the the Inquisition wanted to let him go. The pope was so enraged that he had insulted the pope and basically called him a moron that he said, no, you, you find him guilty of something. And so they went and did that. And so if you look at the actual causes, there are all these there are all these tons of reasons that went into this guy made a lot of enemies, mainly because he's one of the greatest trash talkers who've ever walked the planet. And he enraged everyone. He was so brilliant in putting them down. And then he would make characters about them in his dialogues and insult them even more and so on. He enraged everyone. So when they got the opportunity, they jumped on him, including the Pope. And how does that get represented? It gets represented as there's this eternal conflict between Christianity and the church. When if you look at who starts that story, who starts that story about this being the problem? It's it's a guy who just really didn't like Catholics. And so, yeah, you can point to things just as you can point to atheists who will attribute all of the origins of Christianity to pagan influence. 
And you could point to them and say, they're saying it. Yeah, we, we want to know if they actually have good reasons. But similarly, you can point and say, uh, this guy said it, or this guy said that, or this guy said this, or this guy said that. We know lots of people can say it. What we're, what, what we're doing here. And I, I would I would want to do the same thing with an atheist. If I was sitting here with an atheist and he said, oh, but the pagan origins of Christianity, guess what? When an atheist say that, I know he hasn't studied. I know he saw that in a YouTube video. I know he <laughs> heard that from some moronic college professor who's never studied these things, right? I know because we know that that's, we know that that's not the case. And we know that actual scholars who deal in this say that's absolute nonsense, right? So mm -hmm. the stuff we're doing here is we're, we're trying to get you to say, okay, I understand I've been... I've, I've believed this my entire life. I, I've believed for the past 45 years that it's pagan because I kept hearing that all my all my life. And I know that a lot of my friends in church said that and my pastor even uh, called it, uh, as there's an example right here, um, <laughs> uh, someone said uh, that his pastor, uh, that a pastor calls it Satan Claus and not Santa Claus. And we have here, Santa is Satan with the T and the N transposed. I don't know if uh, Rescue by Mary here is, is joking or not. But what we're saying is, guys, we know that we hear things. Just like if you're talking to an atheist and you tell them that actually what they believe about the history of Galileo, it isn't anything like what they what they heard. They don't yeah. want to believe it because they want they all they want to believe so bad that Christianity is anti-science that they have to cling to these few examples that they have. They have to cling to them. And when you challenge them, it, it just, it just they, 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 they get all angry. And how, how can you deny this? It's so obvious. And they just keep repeating what they're saying. Well, we're in a different situation, but very similar. We have lots of people run around on the internet every Christmas. It's pagan, it's pagan, it's pagan, it's pagan, it's pagan. We say, all right, give us the evidence. And we haven't seen any yet. And every, I mean, yeah. we, we've seen people try to give evidence and that's good that you're trying to give evidence, but what have you given that, that IP here has it immediately exposed as false. Here's someone, someone just gave a source called the Poetic Edda, Stories of the North Gods and Heroes. Now I've not read this. I just did a quick word search through it because I downloaded the book really quickly. I have a, a really good source I can do that on. And I did a word search for Christmas and Yule. Neither of the terms ever come up in the book. So tell me the page number of what this mentions Christmas is pagan on because doing word searches is not coming up. Someone also mentioned the Encyclo uh, uh, Encyclopedia Brit Britannica article uh, on Christmas, that, okay, first of all, Encyclopedia Britannica is filled with errors. Uh, and some, some studies have shown that Wikipedia is actually a little bit more reliable than them, which is not saying too much. Uh, so, yeah, it, that tries to argue it's pagan. It doesn't really give a lot of good evidence or good sources, and they really need to update that and correct it. Because, again, I gave you all the primary sources earlier in this Hangout. There's no evidence it goes back to Saturnalia, as, that, as Encyclopedia Britannica claims. Uh, June here says uh, Santa Claus with the obelisk tree celebrating in December 25th. I'm assuming you're gonna, just going to say, give us a source on that. Santa yeah, Claus give us a source on that. with the obelisk tree. <laughs> so now that the Christmas tree is the obelisk tree and it's being celebrated December 25th. All right. I have to wonder if these people are just trolling at this point. I, I have to wonder too, because this guy has like a, 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 a what's it called? A, a, is it a, Looks like a it's a it's a, it's a um a pe, uh, what is it? not Pegasus it's centaur centaur okay yeah I was thinking satyr I think that's the one that's half goat though um, yeah yeah uh, all right so Kingdom Kid here says we can no longer celebrate Christmas with my mom in law because she is in the Hebrew Messianic movement sad for us and the kids um, yeah that's a crazy group yeah and 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 just to be clear we're not. Uh, because several people have commented. Matter of fact, uh, I have a comment here by, by Cheryl R. in the Super Chat. Uh, Cheryl says, if you believe Christmas is pagan, then you really should not celebrate it. But for those of us who recognize it as a celebration of Christ's birth, it's Christian. Now, now you and I would agree, if, if you are convinced, even if it's by bad arguments and bad reasons, if you are convinced that it's pagan, then we would agree probably you no, know you shouldn't celebrate it, right? Right. Yeah, that's fine. Again, you're not obligated to. No one ever made that claim. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but yes, and that's the problem, right? As soon as you have a mother in the family who says we can't celebrate that, then all the kids are affected, even if they don't uh, even if they don't agree uh, that it's pagan. But uh, yeah, Kingdom Kid, you sh that should. Uh, yeah, you, you should you should be patient with uh, you should be patient with your with your mother and understand. Yep. If it's if she believes it's pagan, then. Yeah, obviously she's not going to want to want to celebrate. Yeah, 
I mean, those messianic arguments, I've seen them. I got a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law that are into they're sort. They're in a little bit more scholarly, at least, temp of it. Uh, I've given that much credit, but I'm still. I don't think those. That's a very good argument. I think that there's a lot of really bad uh, arguments used to arrive at that conclusion. I can get into all that on a whole other time. But yeah, that, I know what you're talking about. There, there are some people who I, I don't. I, 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 I'm wondering. Like, are they are they trying to listen to you in? Are they trying to listen to you in a crowded train and they can't hear you? Because here you have again, Michael <laughs> Jones. If you believe Christmas shouldn't be celebrated, then I disagree with you about that, and I would be willing to debate you to prove that Christians can celebrate Christmas. So this guy's ready to debate you on a view you do not hold. Exactly. Let's do it. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna agree with you the whole time. It's gonna be great. Um, th this goes back to something we were talking about earlier. Uh. Reasonable Faith Indy said, if Christ was born on the 25th, then it seems unlikely that it was pagan in origin. If anything, the church would have been taking uh, it back. Thoughts on the case for the 25th. Now, uh, we, we actually talked about this a bit earlier. Uh, you might want to you might want to uh, uh, re recap that real quick for anyone who uh, tuned in a little bit later. But uh, just, just to be clear, I don't I don't believe there are reasons for coming up with a date on the 25th were good. I don't believe in their assumption. Uh, but yeah, Joel, go ahead. It was early church fathers. They, they had this idea that a prophet would be born on this or be conceived on the same day they died. So if we thought Jesus died on March 25th or April 6th, just count four, nine months, you get the two dates of Christmas, December 25th, January 6th, according to the Eastern church. So that's where it came from. Uh, they actually thought this. Now that's really bad reasoning. You know, people. You know, babies are not always born exactly nine months after they're conceived, and it's really hard to calculate that. People don't always die on the same uh, day that they were conceived. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not really a good argument. We don't know the date Jesus was born, but it doesn't matter. We just set up a day to honor that. Mm -hmm. Michael Heiser's got some interesting views based on astronomy. I mean, it's possible. I'm not sure if it's a. a, a a nailed down argument. I mean, it's speculative at best, but you know, who knows? So, uh, but just to be, just to be clear, if we did think, if we did think, if we did agree with that, right? If we did agree with them and we thought, yeah, uh, uh, important figures like Jesus are going to be, uh, are going to die on the same day they're conceived. And we were convinced, uh, of that particular date, uh, for Jesus death, then we, yeah, we, we, we would agree with that. So th that's that's what we're questioning everyone. So, But the point is, notice uh, what, what Reasonable Faith Indy said here actually applies either way, right? Actually applies either way to the question of whether they there was pagan influence on the date, right? So he said, if Christ was born on the 25th, then it seems unlikely that it was pagan in origin. Notice, it, he, it, Jesus doesn't have to be born on the 25th for, for you to conclude that this wasn't this wasn't them copying the pagans, right? If they mm -hmm. simply believed, if they had a belief that someone like Jesus was going to be conceived on the same day that he died, if they believed that and then they calculated nine months from then to see when he would have been born, then that also means that they weren't getting it from pagan sources, right? They're, they're, they're getting it based on, on a, a, a belief in the sort of harmony of things that this is, this is how important figures are. Uh, this is how they come into the world. And this is how they exit the world on the on the same day. So notice the same principle would would apply. They're not copying it from pagans. They have a weird idea, but it's based on their sort of weird idea rather than rather than uh, paganism. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Here is a super chat. Here, uh, PHP said the position that Christmas is pagan is in line. With the, fundal, with the fundamentalism that led Bart Ehrman potentially to walk away from the faith. Uh, thoughts? And he said, also, I enjoy both your work, and I really miss Nubile. Merry Christmas. So uh, I think the claim here is that this sort of fundamentalism that's, that's seeing paganism lurking behind uh, every door and constantly worried about and obsessing over paganism, uh, he's saying here that this is, is this similar to the kind of uh, fundamentalism that, that led Bart Ehrman to to walk away from the faith. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think it was like a, a strong, he, he was strongly holding to inerrancy. That like everything had to be absolutely perfect. And uh, but it wasn't actually this thing that led him away from Christianity. He mentions he was trying to 
argue for an alleged contradiction in Mark and one of his one of his uh, inst- professors says maybe just Mark made a mistake and that opened the floodgate and maybe it's all a mistake, that kind of thing. Uh, but I think he's just saying it was in line with this fundamental, this kind of mm-hmm. fundamentalist mentality. And I think yeah, pro- probably, yeah, it, it's this mentality that you're trying to look for the devil under every rock and everything has to be mm-hmm. absolutely perfect. I mean, it was just at ETS. You and I were there. And I remember Michael Kona saying, like, what does inerrancy even mean anymore? Like, what does it even mean anymore? People, depending on who you're talking to, inerrancy is always defined differently. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's a whole other topic for another time. But yeah. uh, it's an unfortunate <laughs> case study. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll draw a, a sort of, I'll draw a sort of different, a sort of different parallel here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you, if you don't. If you accept arguments without being careful, then you could accept all kinds of arguments, right? Now you could you could be raised as a Christian and you've never really examined it, and you might be you might be on the right track because you're a Christian, um, and you might come to believe things like like Christmas is pagan and, and not not really have any good reason and just accept what you're told and so on. But uh, I'll say that if you if you believe things without you know, looking for good reasons for them, then I, I do think you're you're opening yourself up in a way that uh, that 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 Ermin did. Uh, if you look at if you look at Ermin, his actual reason for rejecting Christianity, it's kind of a myth that you know he saw these problems and then rejected Christianity. Um, what you know, uh, you know the 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 arguments for the text of the Bible and stuff. What what that did was it convinced him not to be a fundamentalist, right? He says that it was it was all the human and animal suffering in the world that convinced him to reject Christianity, right? Because basically, hey, if there is, um, if there's a, the sort of God that we read about in scripture, then we shouldn't see all this pain and suffering in the world, but we do see it. And therefore, uh, a God like that doesn't exist. And so now that's actually my field in philosophy. Mm-hmm. The, the, the problem of evil or the argument from evil is my field in philosophy. I read some of Ehrman's book on the problem of evil. He actually wrote a book on the problem of evil. And that's how he started the book saying, this is what actually led me away from Christianity. It wasn't, it wasn't my, you know, research and things like that. Um, but he was so incredibly sloppy in his reasoning. I, I couldn't even finish reading it. Right. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't even worth uh, being examined at the philosophical level. Right. It's, it's, it's so anyway, the, the point here is if you can accept all kinds of claims, and as we pointed out, a bunch of you who are saying that Christmas is pagan, even if some of you were right, which we'll, we'll have to find out, even if some of you are right that, that Christmas is pagan, a bunch of you have to be wrong because you're saying things that, that contradict <laughs> yourself on where these things came, came from. And specific claims you're making about this origin and that origin and stuff like that, IP has already shown you, no, that's false. And so the idea is if you're just accepting what you heard in some video, and you cannot be challenged out of that, right? That even when we're saying, what's your source from that? And you're sitting back going, I don't know. I believe it really, really hard, but I can't think of where I got that from. If you'll just accept things in that way and you cannot be challenged on them, it's like, nope, I believed this for 30 years. I have no idea why I believe it. I cannot give any evidence for it, but I'm just going to believe it. And no matter how much evidence you give me against it, I'm just going to continue believing it. If that's how you're, if that's what your methodology is, then I would say, yeah, you're in all kinds of trouble. You're in, a, you're in all, <laughs> you're in all kinds of trouble here. Uh, that's some dangerous stuff. All right, I have a, uh, I have an objection here from Jay Shai. He says, uh, uh, Christmas trees. Oh, are you just asking where this came from? Christmas trees being placed under the moonlight, and the ornaments glisten, so spirits will come receive the gifts under them. Where the heck did this story come from? I don't know. Never yeah. heard it in any scholarly source. Never any primary source. That it, it probably is some sort of modern myth because people make up all sorts of modern myths today. Christmas trees, once again, came from Eastern Europe around the 1500s. The first mention of them is in a a, a town I think in the Rhineland called A L S A C A, like Alsace. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's from an ordinance in 1561. That's the first mention of them. Mm-hmm. For all we know, it probably originated before that, but. It basically came from European traditions, probably more from a paradise tree used in Adam and Eve plays on December 24th. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I'm uh, guys, I'm just going to, we don't want to be on here 
all night long because well that that's what we would be if i tr if i keep trying to go through uh go through <laughs> yeah, all these comments take forever again I, I i skipped to the end because i saw because i saw jay shy's uh, comment pull up so i went ahead and and skipped down but yeah i am officially still not even a third of the way down so i'm gonna have to scroll down uh super chats are highlighted so uh if i can catch some of those gosh there's there's so many comments that it's kind of hard to even scroll through them because every every sort of movement on this trackpad takes me through like uh like two or three pages of of I've comments been answering here. some of them in the uh in the live chat as well so yeah. we got a lot of them covered yeah guys i'm going to if if you if you believe if you believe that you have some great objection uh, and that I didn't get to it because I haven't scrolled down to it yet. Go ahead and repost your great case uh, right now. And I'm going to skip to the end. Um, we have we have a comment here from Yedinsi Boro says Christmas equals the birth of sun equals Tammuz. Tammuz equals the son of Nimrod. <laughs> and from nope. Oh, wrong. <laughs> There's no evidence. Oh my goodness. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, you didn't see. Um, I'll, I I'll mean, point. I'll, read... I'll, I'll, I, no, I just wanted. To, I just wanted to point out again because I have. I have no idea because again, I haven't researched this. You've researched this, uh, but as soon as you say S U N, that's what gave rise to S O N. The the sun S U N gives rise to S O N. As soon as you say something like that, I'm like, this person is completely clueless and has no clue what he's talking about. Because, guys, you you know that only works in English, right? <laughs> you know that you only have that parallel, S-U-N and S-O-N, and the words sound the same when we say them because you're speaking a language where that where that works, right? You know that doesn't work in other languages. I, I, I'm bringing this up because... Uh, when I was when I was locked up, when I was in prison, there's a group called the Five Percenters, and they were saying that that the black man is God, right? And their argument was that the word Allah. So they're the five percent of the nation of Islam. So they're an offshoot of the nation of Islam, which is an offshoot of Islam. They argued that Allah actually stands for arm, leg, leg, arm, head. A L L A H, and Allah stands for arm, leg, leg, arm, head. And, the, the, you know, of course, the problem, you, wait, you're talking Arabic and the way that Arabic is spelled in English, and that's telling you about these English words, arm, leg, leg, arm, head. You know that doesn't work in Arabic, don't you? You know that doesn't work in Spanish, right? You know you, that only works in this particular language. And so, yeah, when you say something like, you know, S-U-N, give rise to S-O-N, boy, you got a problem here. But uh, go, you see this comment, right? Which one? Uh, this Yadinsi comment. Oh you, yeah, do you yeah, see it on the screen? All right. Oh so. yeah, mother Semiramis, all that stuff. Again, all that was made up by Alexander Hislop. Semiramis. If you read, uh, for example, Diodorus talks about her. Never any connection <laughs> to, to Nimrod. She was basically a queen uh, around the, the end of the Bronze Age, maybe early Iron Age, if she even existed. She restored Babylon. She didn't build Babylon. She would have been like a thousand years away from the actual biblical Nimrod who is probably just a nickname for Sargon of Akkade. Mm -hmm. So we're talking like a thousand years apart. There's no connection between Nimrod, Semiramis, and Timuz anywhere in the ancient Near East. Um, yeah, and I, I added the comment up there. Uh, um, TacMap said, I'm sorry, but anyone who says S-U-N equals S-O-N is practicing idiocy. And yeah, I have to agree. Um, yeah. we're, we're not trying to be not trying to be mean. You didn't see, but I think when you have positions like that and you're actually putting them forward, uh, you need to be told this is really really stupid. And if you're if you're if, if that's the sort of argument you're putting forward, wow, that is embarrassingly bad. All right, um, LJ. Uh, so now, guys, now I'm sort of uh, toward the end of the comments. I went ahead and skipped ahead so we could get down to the uh, the ends here, and then we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. Just going to look and see if we have any more. Uh, uh, we already talked about this, but let's go ahead and recap. Maybe we need to flesh it out a little more. So LJ said, what about those who say we should not celebrate Christmas because the Bible does not say that we should celebrate Christmas and the apostles didn't see the need to do it? How do we know? We don't have their entire lives recorded. Yep. We have just uh, scraps of it, basically, with the sources we have. 
And again, no one says you have to, but we're not we're not prohibited from it. I'm not saying anyone has to celebrate Christmas, but yeah. there's no prohibition against it. The internet's not in the Bible, yet here we are using the internet, all of us tonight. Yeah, uh, LJ, so we, we talked about this earlier, but uh, uh, our perspective is if you're saying we can only do things that the Bible specifically says you have to do, um, I mean, again, this is really, uh, IP and I were talking about this before, before we actually went live. This is an Islamic mentality, right? The Islamic mentality, the, the view in Islam is until God tells you how to do something, you have no idea how to do it, right? And that's why in Islam, you have a command about how to step into the bathroom, how to go to the bathroom, right? You have to, so you have to step into the bathroom with your, with your left foot. Uh, how you have to pee, guys have to squat while peeing. Notice that doesn't say sit on the toilet. It says you have to squat to pee. That's how Muhammad did it. Uh, you ha it tells you how to wipe yourself. You have to wipe yourself with an uneven number of stones and so on. So th the idea is you, you, you just can't, you can't know anything unless God has, unless God has told you. That, that's that's not how it works in Christianity, right? Christianity is is more principle based than rule based, right? So Christianity will give you a principle: do unto others as you sh as you would have them do unto you. If you're sitting back going, ah, oh, you know what? I'm wondering, should I should I uh, should I go uh, push this old lady on the ground and 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 kick her in the head? And say no, I wouldn't want someone doing that to me, so I shouldn't do it. It gives you the principle, which then applies to all kinds of situations. So it's not the it, it's not this mentality of unless God says do this, then you can't do it. If 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 you believe like that, then guess what? The 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 apostles, as IP just pointed out, were, they weren't using the internet. They weren't uh, they weren't here on YouTube. They weren't um, doing a, a live chat. They weren't doing any of this. So if they weren't doing it, what what are we doing here? Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I think Tyrone here is trying to give you a source. Tyrone, what is this a source for? You say, A Manual of Church History, page 299, is a primary source, volume one, written by the early church fathers. So, for Tyrone, what? I don't know. Tyrone, tell us what tell us, tell us what your source I'm trying to scroll back to see if he actually explained what this is for, but I, I would be so thrilled. A Manual for Church History, what? A manual for a manual of church history, page two ninety nine, is a primary source. He says, volume one, uh, and it's it's written by the early church fathers. I mean, I think you mean it's a it's a no, it's written by Albert Henry yeah. Newman, page yeah. two ninety nine. You said that's what he says. I mean, I can go there right now because it's on. That's the in the appendix. So, um, oh, here we go. Um, two ninety. I'm getting the charts now. Page two ninety nine is a chart of things happening in the 1100s and 1200s way too late for there to be any connection to any ancient paganism so yeah maybe he's on our side i don't know there's nothing really on here either it's just tough i have to read the side of it because it's a chart uh so i look like a dog right now but uh -huh. not, i don't see anything on christmas on here All and right. again this is an old source from the 1800s a lot of that stuff is uh, based on really bad scholarship. This is the days when they were ranking up things, making up things about Galileo and about how people in the medieval times thought the earth was flat. You gotta, I would recommend you rely on either primary sources, go back to the early Roman Empire or anything back then, or look at more modern scholars like some of the sources I've given. Yeah, so guys, I am, uh, I'm not seeing any good... I mean, that's the closest thing I saw to a source here. Um. Uh, IP. By the way, feel free to, uh, as we're both looking at the comments here, feel free to uh, respond to any comment you see. Yeah, I mean, like I saw some people to. saying that Christmas is. The fact is, is that you know, I've, his name is John. I forget what he said exactly, but you know, Christmas. It's a lie to say Jesus was born December twenty fifth. So if you celebrate Christmas, you're celebrating a lie. No, we don't know the day he was born. It's just a day we set up to honor the incarnation. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, Easter's on a different day every year, isn't it? Oh, we're not actually celebrating on the day that Jesus was actually crucified. Does that mean we're lying? Mm -hmm. No, it's a day of remembrance, it's a day of to honor, to worship. It doesn't mean it has to be on the exact day. I mean, again, uh, Thanksgiving, not really set up on the actual day that that event happened, if it did. Uh, Fourth of July, not, I mean, the Declaration of Independence was actually first signed on July 2nd. It wasn't, it was done being signed on July 4th. It was announced a couple days later. It's just a day to remember it. It doesn't have to be on the exact 
day. Like this is a ridiculous. Yeah, and, and the, the the biblical parallel. I I mean I I see here is uh, you see it in the Old Testament. Um, you know when you had during the time of the patriarchs, they'd be going around and they would have some encounter with God, and then it would say they they put up a little a little pile of rocks to remind them, right, to serve as a reminder, so that years later, years later. They would see the pile of rocks and say, what happened? Well, that's when that's when this happened. And so they would put up these little monuments in different places so that future generations, when they're asking, hey, what's that for? You get to tell the story again, right? So they're, and notice it's not God told them, hey, you better do this here or something like that. It's they're doing it because they understand, hey, we're human beings. We forget to do stuff. We want to be constantly reminded of some important events. We want to be constantly reminded of this time when, when God did this for us or something like that. So we're different. We don't set up piles of, of rocks to do this anymore. We do it with dates. So when we want to be reminded of, uh, you know, the, the, the Declaration of Independence or something like that, we, we set up a holiday when we want to remember, make sure we remember on a yearly basis the birth of Christ or something like that. We, we, have, we have holidays for those things. Um, if you're saying, you know, you just can't do that. How dare you Christians want to remember the birth of Christ? How dare you want to do that? It just it just sounds it just sounds really weird, and so but you don't just stop there. You start saying, um, you know, it, it they actually got it from paganism and so on, and we ask for sources and we get these sort of vague general uh, like 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 right here. Az, I'm I'm assuming Az. Actually, oh, I just found that the page number two ninety nine. I was looking at the wrong page, and yeah, it does try to this this source, a manual of uh, church tradition, whatever, does say that. It was pagan. It doesn't give any early sources. It mentions Saturnalia. Again, I already debunked that. It mentions Yule. I already debunked that. Again, it doesn't really give any good actual primary sources. Wait, 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 wait. So manual church is this, history. What 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 is is this a is this one of the church fathers saying it, or it's some no. later? Okay, so it's someone it's later. Albert writing. Henry Newman, who's quoting or okay. who's re, not even quoting, but referencing them, but he doesn't give any primary sources. It just says, okay. yeah, it comes from Yule or Bermelia or Saturnalia, and, but I mean, like, what's her evidence? It doesn't really give any good evidence. So again, yeah, yeah a lot of these claims are made, but there's no actual evidence to back it up. Yeah, um, Tyrone, we know you can find all sorts of people uh, who say this. Uh, you quoted this, I mean, you the way you wrote this, a manual of church history, page 299, is a primary source, volume one, written by early church fathers. But where you sent us was it's the words of a modern historian right a modern guy who's studying history who doesn't Not even modern he's like 1800s you, know, you said yeah 1800s it looks like yeah so so this is notice you put this forward as if it's a primary source you know what a pri you know what a primary source would be right the primary source would be quoting a church father to to talk about the or the pagan origin of something right but you're not you you, you gave us something that's written a long, long, long time after the church fathers. So do you see the problem here? We're asking for sources and stuff. This is the closest we've gotten to an actual source. I mean, you have more. I'm assuming some of these guys are joking. AZ Farmer Kobe says, it's from the Epic of Gilgamesh, a 5,000-year-old book. Read the book. I'm I have read the Epic of Gilgamesh twice within the past, like, actually six months. So because I'm getting ready to do some videos on the flood. So I read the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh recently. Again. Do no, it doesn't mention anything with connection to Christmas. Do you think he's joking? I think he might. I don't know. I think he might be joking. He might be. Yeah, yeah he might be. <laughs> um, hey, here, here's one. This is a totally, this is a totally uh, different ballpark here. But uh, since it is something good, uh, Rapture Ready here said, Easter is pagan too. Christ did not raise from the dead on... Sunday. So uh, we're, we're obviously not going to go into detail here. We need to be wrapping up. But what are your views on whether Easter is also pagan? I have a video on my channel called Easter is not pagan. I go over all of that. It does not descend from a pagan holiday. So once again, just go go to my channel, type in or go just go type in YouTube. Easter is not pagan. I guarantee my video will be the, like one of the top results. And I debunk that pretty easily. Um. Luke, uh, I got. What's that? Oh, I also have a video on Halloween, and I have a video on Valentine's Day soon. Mm -hmm. So you're covering all the all the holidays there. Yeah. Uh, this is a different kind of question. Uh, Luke says, "Is it okay? Is it okay for Christians to celebrate Christmas, including Santa Claus?" 
Well, it depends on how you do it. I mean, you don't want to like really put all the emphasis on that. But if you've got like a four or a five year old that you know believes in Santa because they're four or five, I mean, there's nothing wrong with talking about it. But I mean, just don't make it the center focus as it should be. But I mean, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it. I mean, is anyone can anyone show how it's sinful? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and you know, I've never I've never told my kids that that Santa Claus is real or anything like that. Either. We tr- we treat him as a as a fictional character, and if it's along if if it's along those lines, I don't see any problem with it. Be you know, because you know, like if you wanted to not even have a fictional character with kinds of stories around, then I don't know, you're gonna have to get pretty far away from culture because what do you do with you know TV shows or movies or or even books that have you know fictitious characters in them or something like that? So. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't completely know if, if those of you who tell your those of you who tell your kids, you know, that Santa Claus is coming to town and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I don't. I don't really have a position. Are your kids, so you figured out. Um, yeah. Jay Shy. Jay Shy in the super chat said, "Let me see if I can find this comment here." Jay Shy, if God does things in seven days, and so did the pagans, and some doctrines are similar to Genesis, does that mean we stole? from pagans, or do they just share similar ancient thinking in magical numbers? Yeah. Uh, if you check out my Genesis series, I talk about a lot of that. There's similar grammatic structures between uh, pagan myths and Genesis. That doesn't mean they're borrowing theology or, or uh, mythology. They're just using similar customs and traditions and writing styles. I'm actually in the email communication with a scholar, I'm Mark Chavalas. Great guy. He wrote some books I've read. Let's see if I have any here. Yeah. This is his book right here on Mesopotamia. Uh, and yeah, they, they, the, the connections between any pagan and Israel is really superficial, one of the, the terms he used, and he said I could quote him on that, so it's okay. But yeah, it's, the, the connections are grammatical, similar, like they both had animal sacrifices, but their theology was completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wait a minute, we've got, we've got a serious comment here. Where'd it go? Okay. Um, probably wrap up soon but yeah 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 well he, yeah we have we've gone i was thinking i was thinking we go an hour it's uh it's an hour and 46 <laughs> so far all right so uh emperor domitian ad 51 to 96 may have changed saturnalia's date to december 25th in an attempt to assert his authority now notice you just said may have but go ahead may have yeah there's no evidence of that saturnalia as far as we know from fast eye inscriptions from macrobius an early fifth century author who was always celebrated 14 days before uh, first of January, if you count according to the, the way they had their months, because they had, uh, they weren't as the same length as ours, you get to December seventeenth. During the days of the Republic, it was seven days. You start on the seventeenth. You gotta include the seventeenth. You get to December twenty-third. During the days of Caligula, shortened to five days. During the day later, and it was shortened to three days. Aurelian did not set up any sort of festival on December twenty-fifth, as far as we know. Um, just because someone keeps harping on this one. Pine Creek says, I'm setting up my nativity scene. Do I put in shepherds or wise men or both? I would go oh. with I would go with shepherds. <laughs> I'd go with both. Yeah, I know what he's doing there. Nice try. Argument from silence. Um I, I would just it seems that it seems that the, the wise men came along a little later while they traveled and like Jesus would True, have been a, Jesus would have been a toddler at that point, so that's what uh, that's Good what point. I was thinking. Um, so yeah, yeah, so so the idea the idea in the in the narratives is that uh, these guys from the east they see this light and they go there, but it takes them a while to get there. And Jesus is a little it seems to be a little bit older there. So, but if you're actually nativity scene nativity scene, then yeah, go with the shepherds there. So hope that answers your question, Pine Creek. All right, we're, we we got to wrap up now. We know we have a bunch more questions. Um, since this is, since people have a lot more objections, I might go, uh, my friend uh, Tony Costa wanted to go live on something. If people want to discuss this further, uh, we can discuss it when, when Tony is on as well. But guys, I'm hoping you come up with some better stuff here. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen these, I've been dating these guys for years. They don't have any sources. You go to my videos, I have two videos on Christmas. Just read some of the comments. They're filled with hate, anger. They don't have any evidence. They're just angry, and they're filling that that gap of knowledge with anger. Mm-hmm. So, again, there's no, excuse me, there's no evidence that Christmas has any pagan connection, because again, I've gone to the primary sources. A lot of these people saying the opposite have it. Mm-hmm. 
All right, shout out to uh, what do you meme here? Uh, that's our uh, that's uh, one of my main buddies in this world that I work with here. And uh, so, if you're not subscribed to his channel, he's putting out all kinds of awesome content. If you're not subscribed to uh, IP's channel, Inspiring Philosophy, the link to there uh, to that is in the description box. Uh, he's pointed out he has uh, he has videos on whether Christmas is pagan and Easter and so on. So definitely want to check out that content and all the content he is producing. All right, guys, we have to get uh, off here. I'll be seeing you again in a couple of days. And thanks to Inspiring Philosophy for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. All right. Catch you all later.